<laughs> oh, Hazel, that old diary of yours is terrific. I've forgotten so many things. Read some more, Hazel. Oh, let's see. Uh, dear diary, remember I told you about this new boyfriend Missy's been dating once in a while? Well, he was here this evening listening to records, and I had a chance to give him the once-over. Frankly, I ain't too impressed. <laughs> I told him a swell joke, and he didn't even get it. <laughs> His favorite saying is, hot zing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if he's typical of your suitors, no wonder you proposed to me the minute you set eyes on me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and when he cracks his knuckles, it sounds like firecrackers. He cracks them a lot. <laughs> uh, go on, Hazel, go on. Well, no, I don't think I ought to, Mr. B. Well, well now, who's boss around here? You are. Well, then go on. Well, if you insist, <laughs> then you better read it. <laughs> he cracks his knuckles like firecrackers. He cracks them a lot. <laughs> and when he crosses his eyes, he expects everyone to fall down laughing. <laughs> I think we can scratch George Baxter off our list. Bust. Mrs. Johnson isn't the only one. Angela and David named him after me. Oh, ain't that nice. You know, he's the first baby in our family for over 20 years. It's a pretty big responsibility. I had to take out life insurance. <laughs> oh, sure, it's a big responsibility. But there ain't nothing so wonderful as a helpless little baby that needs your care. I feel pretty good when I give him his 2 a.m. bottle. Davy's always taken the 2 a.m. feeding so I can get a good night's rest. And the song I always sing to him is the Princeton fight song. <laughs> David's very loyal to his alma mater. How many children do you have, Hazel? Oh, I don't have none, honey. Not of my own. But I was the oldest, so I took care of my sisters and brothers, and then Missy, and now I'm helping out with Harold. <laughs> You're doing a splendid job, Hazel. Splendid. Oh, thanks, Mr. Johnson. He's through with his bottle, Hazel. Would you like to hold him? Would I? That's like asking a kid if he'd like a rock candy mountain. <laughs> oh. oh, there ain't nothing so wonderful as a baby. Herbert, that was a telephone call from Miss Simmons. Simmons? Do we know her, Miss Simmons? Do you remember? She's the nurse we hired to help us with little Herbert <laughs> while the children are on vacation. Oh, yes. The only trouble now is she's been detained and can't get here till late this afternoon. Oh, well, don't you worry about that, Miss Johnson. An easy day over at the Baxter's, and I'd be glad to take care of things. <laughs> you will, yes. Yeah. Knock, knock. Who's there? By George. <laughs> By George who? By George, will you feel neglected if I play poker tonight? Oh, not at all. Not at all? Well, not enough to make a fuss about it. Oh. Well, I ran into Norman and Vic down at the drugstore, and they passed out 10 or 12 hints about Hazel's famous midnight poker supper, so, uh, guess where we're playing? <laughs> well, you better let her know she's over at the Johnsons. Uh-oh. What big calamity is she straightening out this time? I'll bet she's playing patty cake. Mrs. Johnson's niece and her husband and baby are over there. Oh, I didn't know they were coming to town. Well, only the baby's staying. The parents are going on a two-week vacation. Oh, great. Here we go again. Here we go again where? It'll be exactly the way it was when the Blake children moved in on the other side of us. She'll be spending more time with that baby than she will be here. Did Hazel ever neglect her duties here because of the Blake children? Well, no, I guess not. But the point is, Hazel always gets involved. And when she gets involved, inevitably, somehow, I get involved, too. How could she possibly get you involved with that baby, George? That, Dorothy, is beyond my power to predict. But she will. Believe me, she will. 